The production possibilities frontier, sometimes referred to as a production possibilities curve, or PPF or PPC for short, is a very basic model of, not surprisingly, an economy's production possibilities. In other words, all the different possible combinations of stuff that an economy can make. The purpose of the production possibilities frontier is twofold. First, it illustrates the trade-off that an economy faces in its production decisions. And second, it helps show the benefits of specialization and the gains from trade. Because models are simplified versions of reality, we're going to assume for the purposes of our production possibilities frontier that the economy can only produce two different goods. A classic example of two representative goods for this purpose is guns and butter. Let's take a look at what a guns and butter production possibilities frontier looks like. Our example uses the following setup. So we've got 100 people in our very simple economy here. Each of these people works eight hours per day. And we say that each person can either make half of a gun per hour. In other words, it takes them two hours to make one gun, so they make a half a gun in one hour. Or they can make two pounds of butter per hour. So they have to think about how much they can produce or what combinations they can produce if they split their time between making guns and making butter. And we can show in the aggregate for the economy overall how much production we can have as a function of hours making guns. Let's just examine what happens as we move from making only guns or spending all of our time doing that down to spending no time making guns. The first thing that we notice is if each person is working eight hours per day, then if each person is spending eight hours making guns, they're spending zero hours making butter. If they're spending six hours making guns, they're spending two hours making butter. If they're spending four hours making guns, they're also spending four hours making butter. If they're spending two hours making guns, they're spending six hours making butter. And if they're spending no time making guns, then they're spending all of their eight hours making butter. And we can think about, for each of these allocations of time, how many guns and how much butter we end up with in each case. So here, if each person is spending eight hours making guns, and they can make a half of a gun per hour, then each person is going to make four guns per day. But we have a hundred people. So if each person makes four guns per day, and we have a hundred people, that's going to be four hundred guns in total. So we just put four hundred here. And if nobody is spending any time making butter, then we're going to end up with no butter. If each person is spending six hours making guns, it takes them a half, half a gun per hour, then each person is making three guns per day, just because six times one half is three. And we have a hundred people. So if each person's making three guns, hundred people, it's gonna be 300 guns. Now we actually have some butter production here. So if each person is spending two hours making butter and they're making two pounds of butter per hour, then each person is making four pounds of butter per day, a hundred people, it's going to be 400 pounds of butter. In this case here, if each person is spending four hours making guns, again, half a gun per hour, each person is making two guns per day, a hundred people, that's going to leave us with 200 guns. Each person's also spending four hours making butter. So if each person's spending four hours making butter, at two pounds of butter per hour, each person's making eight pounds of butter. Again, 100 people, so in total we have 800 pounds of butter. If each person's spending two hours making guns, again, at a half a gun per hour, each person's making one gun per day. 100 people, that's going to give us 100 guns total. If each person's spending six hours making butter, 
and they're making two pounds of butter per hour, then each person is making 12 pounds of butter per day. 100 people gives us 1,200 pounds of butter total. And finally, if we have zero hours or no time devoted to making guns, we're not going to end up with any guns. We can just put a zero here. And if we have eight hours a day dedicated to making butter, at two pounds of butter per hour, each person is making 16 pounds of butter. 100 people, that's going to give us 1,600 pounds of butter. So this is just a representative sample of all the different combinations of output that our economy could produce. But we're going to use these points and plot these points to construct our production possibilities frontier. Here we have a framework for our production possibilities frontier. The first thing to notice is the axes. So for our production possibilities frontier, our axes are just the quantities of the two different goods that we're looking at. So here I've chosen to put guns on the y-axis or the vertical axis, and butter on the x-axis or horizontal axis. But it was actually kind of arbitrary which way I put them, and there's no particular reason why I couldn't have put butter up here and guns down here. What is important to keep in mind is the interpretation of the th quantities that we're going to be looking at later, that we're going to be talking about the meaning of the slope of the production possibilities frontier and things like that, in which case it actually does matter which one is here and which one is here, so it's just something that you want to keep track of and be aware of. So the way I usually do this is I start by plotting the vertical and horizontal axis intercepts. So in this case, those intercepts are going to be this first guy here and this last guy here. So if we have a combination of 400 guns and no butter, that's just going to go at the zero on the butter axis, or all the way over here, and at the 400 on the guns axis. So you can just put that somewhere, maybe here. Say this is 400. And this is going to be one of the points on our production possibilities frontier. To plot the other extreme, where we have zero guns and 1,600 pounds of butter, that's just going to be a zero on the guns axis, so all the way down here, and a 1,600 on the butter axis or all the way out here. So I'll just label this 1600 here. And that's going to be another point on our production possibilities frontier. Now I'm going to cheat a little bit because I know that this is going to trace out a straight line. So I'm just going to draw in that straight line and then we'll put the rest of the points in. So we can plot this point here at just 300 on the guns axis and 400 on the butter axis. Maybe that's somewhere here. Just something like that. Just a very simple points plotting exercise. It's just a little bit, it takes a little bit of getting used to because we have one good on one axis and one good on the other axis, rather than a typical independent variable, dependent variable, you know, y equals f of x sort of situation like we're used to seeing in our math classes. We can plot this point here. It's 200 guns, 800 pounds of butter. 200 guns is about here. So our point's going to be here. Not too complicated. We can plot 100 guns, 1,200 pounds of butter. 100 is about here. So 100, 1,200 here. And then our 0, 1,600 was the point that we already had at the end here. So here we have a very simple production possibilities frontier 
And you'll notice that the production possibilities frontier has the interpretation of for any given quantity of one of the goods, whether it be guns or butter, the production possibilities frontier tells us the maximum of the other good that our society or our economy is able to produce. For example, we could say if the economy is producing 300 guns, then it can produce a maximum of 400 pounds of butter. We could also think about it the other way and say, for example, if the economy is producing 800 pounds of butter, then it can produce a maximum of 200 guns. We can divide points on our graph into feasible and infeasible points. Not surprisingly, feasible points are just points that are possible for the economy to produce, and infeasible points are points that the economy cannot produce at. So here, graphically, we can see that points that are inside of the production possibilities frontier are feasible. Because it, clearly, if we can produce this much stuff here, we can produce this lower quantity of both items here. So anything inside our production possibilities frontier is possible. In addition, anything on our production possibilities frontier is possible. Because the production possibilities frontier just shows the points where if all of our resources are being used and being used efficiently, what are all the different combinations of stuff that we can make? Well, if we can make it, then it's certainly feasible. So the set of feasible points includes all the points along the production possibilities frontier. On the other hand, points that are outside of the production possibilities frontier are what are called infeasible, because they're just not possible. For example, if we're saying that the most an economy can produce, for example, is this point here, and that's when all of the resources are being used fully and efficiently, then it's certainly not possible for that economy to get to that point here, because this point out here represents a situation where the economy is producing more of both of the goods. And if it could produce more of both of the goods, then by definition this point was not efficient, which is, contradiction to, which is a contradiction to our definition of a production possibilities frontier. So the easy thing to remember here is that a point is feasible or possible if it's inside the production possibilities frontier or on the production possibilities frontier. And a point is infeasible if it's outside of the production possibilities frontier. In addition, we can divide the set of feasible points into efficient points and inefficient points. Efficient points, graphically speaking, are points that are actually on the production possibilities frontier. And inefficient points are points that are strictly inside the production possibilities frontier. Intuitively, efficient points are points where all the resources in the economy are being used fully and efficiently. In other words, there are no opportunities for improvement left on the table, and it's not possible to get more of one item without getting less of the other item. On the other hand, inefficient points are points where either resources are not being used fully or resources are not being used efficiently. In this case, it is actually possible to get more of both of the items. And we could see here that we could move from this point here up to a point up and to the right on the production possibilities frontier and get to a point where we actually have more of both items. Now, it's important to note here that when we're talking about efficient versus inefficient, we're specifically referring to efficiency in production as opposed to efficiency in allocation or efficiency in consumption. That we're not making any guesses as to what point along this curve people actually most want to consume at. We're just saying in terms of production efficiency, are all of our resources being used efficiently and fully? 
There are two other things to note about the production possibilities frontier. First, although given the numbers in this example, it turned out that our production possibilities frontier was in fact a straight line, it's quite often the case that the production possibilities frontier actually shows a bowed out shape such as this here. We'll come back and talk about why that is. I just didn't want to leave you with the impression that all production possibilities frontiers were in fact straight lines when they're not. The second point to note is that when there's no trade among parties and an economy has no choice but to consume only what they produce, we can also think of the production possibilities frontier as a consumption possibilities frontier. Because if countries are acting as you know, islands in and of themselves that don't interact with anyone else, then what they can consume is limited by what they can produce.